Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we are back aboard the bridge of a Tier 6 aircraft carrier for probably the last time for a while, this time bringing you another battle report from Tier 6 Japanese carrier Ryuho. Now, May's over now, and if you remember what started this whole series of videos was an internal contest uh, within my clan, Kraken, here on NA, that one of the uh, one of the uh, clan members had run, basically challenging us to get the best top tier experience, the best um, uh, experience total we could get in a uh, in a tier six aircraft carrier base experience. And I'm proud to say that this game here, played on about the 23rd or 24th of May, is the winning entry. So. I figured, why not? Let's talk through it. Because I feel like this game is a really good encapsulation of all of the little lessons I've learned. Not just about Tier 6 Carrier, but just about Carrier play in general. Plane management, hull position, target selection, etc, etc, etc. And so we're going to just talk through a variety of things here early on. Because the first seven-ish minutes of this game... And it's really more like the first half of this game is not all that exciting, certainly not in terms of damage totals. We're spawning here on the southeastern corner of Trap. And if you have paid attention from previous videos, for example, my last one to, uh, on HMS Furious, you've seen me talk about the, 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 the repeatedly kind of talk about trying to improve my hull position, the criticality of putting your hull in the right place to influence the game. So what you're going to see me do, and you can kind of see my, my in the mini-map me making this move already, I'm moving my hull up near the B-cap. There's that big fat island on kind of the southeastern corner of the B-cap right there in about, what is it, about F6 or F7. I'm going to snuggle up to that island. And I'm going to be kind of centrally located here with the ability to sort of put planes into any cap circle I wish on the board fairly quickly. Now, obviously, like you do, I've got the rockets out early. I don't know where the enemy destroyers are. I was looking for them in B, no dice. I ran up to C, couldn't find them, and I came back to B when I saw that the cap, my friendly Icarus down there, his cap was being stalled, and sure enough, here they are. Here's one of the Fushuns. Smokes up as soon as he's spotted, and the other one, his buddy, there he is, just the other side of this smoke cloud. Now, these two guys are in a div, and we're going to see a lot of interaction <laughs> with equal tiered destroyers over the next few minutes because these two dudes will not leave this cap circle no matter what I throw at them. So just pay attention here as we get started. Three minutes in and um, we've kind of got a pretty good sense of the disposition of the enemy team. We're about to pick up C. We're probably going to give up A and B is contested for the moment. You see there the friendly Icarus left his smoke. He's moving up. And um, I initially start to grab rockets, but then I'm like, nah, if those Fushuns are going to sit in the smoke, I'll grab some torpedoes. It's very common for destroyer players to just camp out and chill out in their little smoke clouds. And there's nothing wrong with being able to put aerial torpedoes into one either. So I figure, why not? Let's give it a go. Now, this drop here, unfortunately, is a huge mistake. I don't... Those are, torpedoes are dropped way too far back. Um, that's one of the tricks of... Of trying to kind of guess. I should have gone in a little closer. About about another three seconds on that run, and they might have been useful. As it is, they're dropped too far back. They're not gonna be not gonna be of any use. Um, realizing this, of course, by now I can kind of see this. I'm gonna have this issue. I come around for a bit of another drop here, and I do put two more under the water. You saw there, one of them is out of the smoke. There we go. He's running south. The friendly Icarus has now been found by his buddy who has run north around the caldera. And so now I absolutely grab the rocket planes to um to, to come support him and help him out. Now, I am spotted there briefly, right? The friendly carrier has some dive bombers in theater. They pick up my location. So these two destroyers in the cap now, four minutes into this game, they know exactly where I am, right? They know I'm close by. And we'll talk about what that means for them in a minute. Right now, I want to highlight this series of runs because for all the crap that rockets get, Sometimes kids' rockets ain't that easy to use, right? You saw one there. I blew that. I blew a drop. I blew. I blew, basically blown two drops in a row to get to get to get one rocket, right? I'm, I'm just. Uh, I understand why rockets get the rap they do, but people talk like they're insta hit. They ain't kids. Rockets miss too. There is the first good solid hit I get with the rockets in this match. About five minutes in, and his buddy has now kind of. Just kind of camped out to the south over here. Now, I've also got a friendly Nuremberg in the same theater helping me out. You see him there kind of hovering on the bottom end of the cap. 
So while I continue to spot these guys, he's going to continue to bag his own, his own resets as well. The beauty of me being this close to these two destroyers and them not having a line to attack me is that as soon as I launch a couple of rocket salvos, those planes are back on my deck very quickly. So that by the time I finish exhausting the whole, the whole entire squadron, a new squadron is already ready. I am never without rocket, basically a full squadron of rocket planes because these guys can't shoot them down enough and because of the cycle time back to my deck, how quick it is because of how close I am to this cap circle. See there, the friendly Ryujo bags one of these clowns, so that's super beneficial. His buddy now on the backside of the caldera means that the Nuremberg has no shot. So the Nuremberg's trying to maneuver around, and he's eventually gonna gonna, gonna kind of flip around where he can he can start taking shots again. In the meantime, this Fushun is gonna continue to use the Caldera for cover from the Nuremberg, but he cannot hide from me. Finally starting to get some good good rocket salvos on these guys. I guess maybe I needed some warm-up time. I don't know. But sometimes my first few rocket salvos in a game occasionally are just garbage. He ends up grounding himself there, which kind of messes up my line. I expected him to drift a little farther forward, so those go into the bow for only a couple of pens. But the big thing here, and what's really key to all of this, is I'm continuing to get the resets. We're, what, six and a half minutes into this game, nobody's capped B yet. Because I have been here like a, a dog with a bone in my teeth. I absolutely refuse to let these destroyers cap while I have planes to throw at them. But the cyclone that was coming up, that was noted, we were notified of earlier, is literally seconds away from starting. This uh, this friendly Fushun, I expect to find him farther away, so I start my run here, but he's turned back in. So this run is garbage because I can't get it lined up in time. But at least now I know where he is. It looks like he's going back to meet the Nurnberg, which I'm a little surprised to see. I mean, that's about a three-quarter HP Nurnberg. But, uh, uh, okay. Well, it's been a good run, little Fushun, but I'm going to land enough of these here and, and your game will be over. So now, finally, seven and a half minutes into this game, less than 20,000 damage, but the team has done pretty well for themselves, right? Look at it here. We've got, we've got a four-ship lead. That's that, that always feels good. Unfortunately, the Nuremberg in the cap, the B cap, becomes obligatory exploding Nuremberg, and um, I'm forced to deal with other things. This Bayern, way back on the three line, has made a nice juicy target of himself by moving off all by his, his lonesome. I have zero qualms about going in, going in against an equal tiered battleship like this. This guy is going to spiel my full fury for a few minutes, and so we'll talk through this sequence. Starting with the torpedo bombers, like you do. He's trying to get oriented. Looks like he might actually be trying to make a cap push here, which I don't recommend. I can kind of see the thought process, right? The... Um, the Cyclone's about to set in, right? The the squishy torpedo cruiser that had torpedoes that was in the cap is now dead. So there's not really a whole lot to kind of discourage this push. So I understand where his head's at. But once he draws my attention, he really needs to be finding friends. With the push down south having evaporated, and you can kind of see that now, the Vlad, the Nuremberg, the Pensacola, the Ashitaka have all kind of pushed into the A cap, and they're in the process of pushing through the A cap. I've already started backing my hull off. I don't want to be caught sitting in that position if they come whipping around the corner up the 4-5 line from A. So I'm making a big loop, going to run back north for a bit, because you see the majority of my team is now pushing through C. So we're going to go kind of get a little closer to them. I did land a flood, incidentally, on that that, that second uh, second Bayern Torp run there. He, sucked with the, he had to uh, suffer that one for a while. And now I bring back the infamous Japanese AP bombs. Now this is um, this is a really nice sequence here. I get I think I get two runs out of these before all is said and done, and um, it, it really highlights the kind of the weakness that German battleships have to AP bombs in general. It, it's pretty much just any nation's AP bombs. You can do this with all Japanese AP bombs, Enterprises bombs, Graf Zeppelin's bombs if you can get them to land. Ha ha ha. Um, so German battleships make great targets for AP bombs. They just don't have a lot of deck armor, and you will definitely put some put some bombs through. Now I got a good citadel on that first one. This time though, the drop's not so good. RNG trolls me, but I do get a couple of resets, so it's not all wasted. 
The nice thing here, and you've heard me talk about this, it, it's difficult to spam the same plane type over and over, right? So now that I'm basically one-on-one -on -one with this capital ship, and I know that he's vulnerable to the bombs, he's going to get torpedoes. You've already seen AP bombs. We did that one. I'm coming back with the torpedoes. When this runs over, he's going to get bombs again. And I'm just going to keep cycling back and forth uh, so that he's always having to deal with some threat or other. Start that run a little farther back. I don't like this line. I'm not convinced I'm going to land in any of these. But I do get a big a big bow torpedo, a bit of a reset there for a flood. And uh, that was nice just because it kept him from capping. I think if I hadn't landed that, he probably would have capped B. But as it was, I got the I got at least one reset there. We're going to get one more drop in here on this broadside. Two more torps, a few more reset ribbons. And I've got just enough planes to come back for one more run. Bayern's AA is decent, but it's not enough to, to, to just ward me off all by himself. This this poor Bayern, I, I, I kind of legit felt bad for this guy, right? Like, he's off by, he's all by himself. He's, you know, his team is entirely folded. He's all in the A cap. But some of this was, he was down there with that those guys, and he ran off by himself. And so now he becomes a juicy target. Now, this is a run I'm particularly proud of, because one of the things I learned about bombs, dive bombs, if you can kind of make this long, swooping turn, you see this, I'm going to, the flak has trouble tracking me, because I'm constantly turning until I'm just about ready to push the trigger and line up the drop. And it's not going to take me much to get this guy off the board. A single penetration will do it, and as it is, I get a nice fat citadel on the way out the door. He didn't have an 1800 HP, but it feels better. It looks, the pretty ribbon looks better, I suppose. Whew. 12 minutes, 12 minutes in, two kills. But the big thing here, 20 defense ribbons. I have basically spent my game preventing the enemy team from capping B. I won't say all by myself, because I did have some help between the Icarus and the Nuremberg. But substantially, right? Like, I've done a lot of heavy lifting here. Surviving enemy ships, we still have a nice, comfortable three-ship lead. The surviving enemy ships have now kind of finally pushed through the A cap. You see, we can see, we have eyes on the Vladivostok, but with the weather setting in, we don't quite know where the other two are. There's the Pensy. We've picked him up, and so I decide, well, ah, Pensacola was pretty squishy. I don't know what this guy's health is just yet, but I figure, eh, Pensacola, eh, he doesn't really have torpedo protection. I'll see what I can do. Again, I take a step, a moment there to reset my hull. I'm actually going to take my hull position now and swing wider over to the 910 line to kind of flank these surviving ships. Put my planes over on that uh, that side of them. That's maybe a bit of a mistake because if they were, if I, if this game was to progress long enough and we would turn down there and they could they could trap me against the board edge. But that's what I did. So I'm talking through, at least explain to you why I'm kind of thinking what I'm thinking. I do one run on the Pensacola and I nope out because there's a lot of fighter cover. There's a lot of AA down there and I do lose some planes to the fighters. So I don't have a full torpedo squadron for a bit. I start to grab the rockets because there was the low, very, very low health Pensacola, very, very low health Nuremberg. But my team took care of both of those ships. Nothing left really. So I grab basically what I have left on the deck that's useful and that is this half strength torpedo squadron. So my plan here is I've got two battleships left. They're basically on top of each other. I'm going to get one run in. I know I'm not going to get a second round of these torpedoes, not against the Vladivostok. His AA is too good. So I'm planning on just one more run. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing wide over here where he's maybe, honestly, maybe not expecting it, but certainly not, um, not looking for it. He's got so many ships in his face now. He's going to struggle to maneuver against these. And I start my run a little farther out intentionally so that I'm already on the deck by the time the Vlad's AA starts activating. Remember, I'm only planning on getting two of these off, two of these into the water, and I'm probably I know I'm acknowledging that I'm gonna lose lose some of these planes. That's fine. You saw there the Prince Eugen's torpedoes coming in from one side. I've kind of bring in two from the other. Between the two of us, we beat the crap out of this poor Vladivostok, and the Turpets seals the deal. I grab the dive bombs to go back for the Ashitaka, but in the end, it doesn't matter. The game game's over. Team cleans this mess up. In a game that lasted 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes, I racked up uh, basically 100,000 damage for all intents and purposes, which I'm not going to complain about. Of course, that's a nice, respectable damage total for bottom tier carrier. But 20 defense ribbons means that my base XP is over 2.2 thousand. 2,200 
base XP. And that is good enough for uh, the best uh, of our little clan contest. Which means that I have some prizes to share with you guys. That's right. I'll talk more about this in a scuttlebutt this week, but... The bottom line is, is that this entitles me, I believe, if I read the contest right, to a tier 8 premium ship. I don't need a tier 8 premium. So what we're going to do, and I've already talked to Griefer, he's going to, we're going to, we're going to set that up. That's going to become a giveaway to you guys here on the YouTube channel. And uh, I'll, I'll talk more about that later this week. I've got to celebrate 2,000 subscribers, which is just a milestone we've just crossed this week. Huge props to all you guys for the help with all of that. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there. Wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.